morning, and welcome to online worship here with Bethel Church. My name is Matt Benton, and I am the pastor here at Bethel, and it is my joy to welcome you to worship on this Epiphany Sunday. I want to say a special word of welcome if this is one of your first times checking out Bethel Church. Welcome to the church on the corner. Here at Bethel, we are about loving God, loving one another, and loving your neighbor. I have a couple announcements for us this morning. Uh, over the past few weeks, we have been collecting money. We've been trying to raise funds for AV system upgrades. Our goal is to put in uh, a, audio and, and video systems that will allow us to live stream uh, from the sanctuary. And our goal for this project was to raise $52,000. Well, I am blown away with how you all have responded to this challenge. Thus far, we have raised over $45,000 for this project. Some of the fruits of that we are already seeing as we have done some sound upgrades and in the coming weeks, we are going to be able to install the video component to that. Thank you so much for all that you have done, all that you have given to this project. If you want to know more about this, because uh, we've been primarily talking about this over email and on social media. If you want to know more about this, you can go to BethelUMC.org slash A-V-Campaign. And you can find a video about what we're trying to do and to track our progress towards our fundraising goal. But again, thank you so much for how far we have come in just a few weeks. Next Sunday, we are planning to have our monthly in-person sermon and sacrament service. Uh, so like everything else in this COVID pandemic time, make sure that you're checking your email and our social media for the latest updates. Uh, but for now, we are continuing to plan that that will happen at 10 a.m. next Sunday here in the sanctuary. We're going to have our normal safety protocols in place, masks, need to be worn for the entirety of the time that you're on the Bethel campus. Uh, we seat so that social distancing can be maintained. And we ask that when you're in the sanctuary, that uh, once you have been ushered to your seat, that you remain in your seat until the end of the service when an usher will come and dismiss you. That way we are keeping everyone safe and allowing um, everyone to, to be here responsibly. Uh, we are working on, on having a live stream of that for next Sunday, so if you are not ready to attend in person, there will be a live stream online option. But next Sunday, we will have our monthly in-person service at 10 a.m. That's my announcements for this morning. I would like to invite our choir to come up and lead us in worship. that you were born for this to open up heaven's door and open up the floodgates of your love for us grant that we might see that we might truly know 
this love, that we may be drawn ever closer as the Magi were to the manger that is the throne of the King of Kings. All this we pray in his name. Amen. affirm that which we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, the Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please continue to join us in worship as we sing We Three Kings. Now, I would like to ask for all of the children to perk up uh, because I have a special message for you. And I know that you're disappointed that it's just me. Uh, Patrick and Evan aren't here with me. Trust me, they're going to be even more disappointed to not be a part of this. But I have a game that I would like to play with you. It's called Pastor Matt Says. And it's exactly like Simon says, except my name is not Simon. My name is Pastor Matt. So Pastor Matt says, raise your hand. 
Pastor Matt says, put your hand down. Pastor Matt says, pat your head. Pastor Matt says, rub your belly. Stop. Oh, I got some of you, didn't I? <laughs> Pastor Matt says, stop. Why are we playing this silly game? Why did the choir members feel compelled to do it? You can't see them because they're off camera, but they did, and it was a little funny. The wise men, the magi, were led by the star. They took their direction from something else, and it led them to Jesus. As Christians, God is giving us all sorts of things, all sorts of ways to know that, that he is out there, and that God loves us, and God wants us to follow. And so as, as people of faith, our job is to kind of play a game of God says. God says, love your neighbor. God says, worship me. God says, do good things to people. God says, treat others the way that you want to be treated. God says, be kind. And when we do those things, we are drawn deeper and deeper into love and relationship with God as we learn how to love our neighbors. So the, the story of the Magi, it, it, it helps teach us how we can be led by God to discover Jesus and to learn how to follow him and to love others. So, when you think about the wise men, think about Simon Says or follow the leader and the ways in which we can learn how to follow our God and to grow in love with him. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending the star. Thank you for guiding the Magi. Thank you for guiding us to discover Jesus and to love him as best we can. Help us to love him and love you more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to hear now the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. Spoiler alert, he didn't want to go and pay him homage. When they had heard of the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy on entering the house. They saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Almighty and all-loving God, in calling us to worship you this day, you have already spoken to each one of us. So, Lord, as we turn to your word, read and proclaimed, we simply ask that you continue speaking and that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There are some stories that are so crazy, you know that they're true. I was playing golf one time with my family uh, up in Deep Creek, Maryland. 
The Wisp Ski Resort has a golf course that they run in the summers, and a couple of their holes go up the ski slopes. So some of the holes can get a little steep at times. Which is why, before we teed off, the starter warned us that if we are driving up a hill, do not, under any circumstances, stop the golf cart. Because when you drive it forward again, it won't engage forward faster than gravity will take it backward. And you'd wind up hurtling down the hill. It was really a shame that two of the guys I was playing with, my brother-in-law and my cousin's husband, weren't paying attention at that moment in time. On the third hole, my cousin's husband hit his tee shot into the woods, and he had to hit it up back up a huge hill to get it into play. He flubbed his second shot, and it went about halfway up the hill, which led him walking halfway up the hill to hit his third shot. After he hit it, my brother-in-law was driving up the, up the hill, not stopping, when my cousin's husband threw up his hands as if to say, aren't you gonna pick me up? My brother-in-law hesitated for a moment, and that one moment of hesitation proved enough. The cart failed to re-engage, and slowly the forward momentum stopped, and the cart was dragged by gravity back down the hill. Now, it's about the point in the story where I need to tell you that at the bottom of the hill was a pond. <laughs> Up until this point, I'm relying on second-hand accounts of what happened because I was in the fairway, hitting my second shot. But when I drove back to the car path at the top of the hill, I looked down to see a golf cart in a pond, my brother-in-law lying on the grass 10 feet in front of the pond, and my cousin's husband stock still in disbelief. Now you all know that this story is way too crazy for me to have made up. It has to be true. Today is the day in the life of the church called Epiphany. On Epiphany, we tell the same story every year, the story of the wise men, the three kings. Although, fun fact, the Bible never says that there were three, just that they had three gifts. And you know someone just signed their name to the card. We tell the story of the Magi. And because we tell this story every year, and because every year we look at our nativity scenes that have three wise men, this story feels familiar to us. It feels normal. But let me tell you, this is one of the craziest stories in the Bible. So crazy, it has to be true. But to see how bizarre this story is, I have to do a little bit of explaining. So Matthew wrote his gospel about 40 to 50 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. At that time, there were two basic groups of Christians. There were Jewish Christians, people of Israel, who came to understand that Jesus was the promised Messiah. And then there were Greek Christians, people who were born outside of the community and faith of Israel, who had come to follow Jesus as Lord. Matthew writes his gospel to a primarily Jewish Christian community, folks who still retained the stories, the understandings, and the practices of the Jewish faith. Matthew begins his gospel with a genealogy that connects Jesus to Abraham. Luke has a genealogy in his gospel, but his goes from Adam. Luke was writing to a predominantly Greek community, where Adam being the first human would have been uh, more significant than Abraham. But to Matthew, written to a Jewish community, Abraham was the key figure. Matthew calls it the kingdom of heaven, where Mark and Luke will say kingdom of God. Saying kingdom of heaven, was a, there was a practice in the Jewish community where you would do things like that to avoid writing or saying the unspeakable and holy name of God. Matthew was written to a Jewish community that would have prized being part of God's people, would have prized membership within the people Israel. This is an essential fact as we look at this story. So now let's ask the question, who were these magi? Where did these people come from who now populate our nativity scenes? We call them wise men, and that allows us to think that they had some sort of special knowledge, some sort of special learning or intellect that would allow them to know things that others didn't. 
The Magi, however, were a Near Eastern sect, most likely from Persia, that consulted the heavens and the stars to unlock the deep mysteries of the universe. They were astrologers, and they were from Persia. Going way back into the Old Testament, the first truly great threat to the Israelites were the Assyrians. It was the Assyrians who conquered the northern kingdom of Israel. When their empire crumbled, the Babylonians stepped in to fill the power vacuum. The Babylonians conquered the southern kingdom of Judah and sacked Jerusalem. The Babylonian empire eventually gave way to the Persian empire. People from Persia weren't just foreigners. They were former oppressors. They were enemies. They were people who stood in the way of what God had promised to Israel. Further, Israel were a people of re revelation. They were a people constituted because God spoke to them. They had contempt for people who would look to the stars to discover the mystery of the universe. You don't need to look to the stars to uncover the mysteries of the universe. You me merely need to study, read, meditate, contemplate, and follow Torah. God had given them, by divine word, the key to all knowledge and understanding. Persian stargazers were the complete opposite of what it meant to be a faithful Israelite. And yet, it is these Persian stargazers who come to Bethlehem. It is these Persian stargazers who come to the place where Jesus was laid, and they kneel before the infant Jesus, and they worship Jesus. They give him gifts, the type of gifts one would give a foreign leader. They treat this infant as if he is a mighty king. And this is where the craziness comes in. There are no shepherds in Matthew's gospel. Typically, when it comes to the Christmas story, we take, um, what, we, we take what we have in Matthew and in Luke, and we combine it into one story. But in the Bible, these are two distinct tellings. And in Matthew, there are no shepherds who come to the infant Jesus immediately following his birth. In Matthew, a gospel emerging out of a very Jewish community, the first people to hail Jesus as Messiah and King are Persian stargazers, the exact opposite of the people, the exact opposite of the people you'd expect within this story to do it. People outside the community of Israel, outside the faith, getting their knowledge not from Revelation, not from Torah, not from God's word, but from something external. That's not how knowledge or acknowledgement of God's Messiah was supposed to come. The story is so crazy, it has to be true. But the craziness doesn't stop there. When the Magi come to Jerusalem and ask Herod where they could find the child who had been born king of the Jews, Herod gathered together his scribes. These were religious experts. They were a group of people that Herod had on retainer to interpret the law, to interpret Torah, to answer important religious questions. They know their stuff, and they know it well enough that they can tell the Magi where it was expected that the Messiah was to be born, in Bethlehem. So the scribes tell the Magi, and the Magi leave. And you know what the religious experts do? You know what the devout people do. You know what the righteous ones do. Nothing. Not one thing. They stay in Jerusalem. They had just found out the Messiah, the King of the Jews, the long-awaited-for one, was born, and they do nothing. It's one thing to say that the religious elites missed all the signs of the Messiah's birth. It's another thing entirely to say that once they were alerted to the Messiah's birth, they gave the ancient equivalent of a shrug emoji. This story is so crazy, it has to be true. And if that's the case, if this story is so crazy that it's true, then it serves to us as an example of how folks from outside the faith come to encounter Jesus. The Magi were never going to come to acknowledge Jesus outside of something external. The Magi were never going to reason their way or learn their way to Jesus or the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had to be led there. They had to be led to Jesus. They had to be led to an experience of Jesus as their king. They had to be led to God. And they were led by a star. They were led by the star. 
So let's talk about where we are in this story, how it is we fit in. Epiphany is a day when we celebrate the ways in which people come to know, encounter, and worship Jesus. And oftentimes, sermons today cast us as the wise men, not unlike what I did in my children's message. What do you need to do to encounter the Christ child anew? But today, I want to flip that script. Let's say that we aren't the wise men, that we aren't the kings, that we aren't the magi. Because we are in church. We are in the community. We are already within the faith. All of us have people in our lives who haven't yet encountered Jesus. All of us have people in our lives we pray would encounter Jesus. All of us know people who are outsiders that we want to become believers. All of us know people whose lives would make sense if they would come to know, worship, and love our God, the living God. They just need a star. They just need something to lead them to Jesus. Or perhaps they need someone. The Magi aren't the people gathered for worship today. They're the ones who spend Sunday mornings at Starbucks. They're the ones who spend Sunday mornings at brunch. They're the ones reading the paper or watching the Sunday news shows. They're the ones getting their weekly shopping done right now. They're the ones who aren't in worship that we believe need to be in worship. We aren't the Magi. You, me, we are people who are already a part of the community of faith. We are the ones who have the scriptures, who believe in them. We are the in crowd. We are much more like the scribes than we are the Magi. And so I have two questions for you as we look upon this story. First, having heard the news that the Messiah has come into the world, what will you do? Will you return back to life as usual? Will you return back to the everyday work and business and go about your life unencumbered by this news? Will you be like one of the scribes in the story? Or will you write a different ending? One in which you are so moved by this news that you live differently in some noticeable material way. Will your calendar, will your choices, will your relationships, will your checkbook reveal that the news of the Messiah's birth has moved you to action? And second, what will you do when the Magi come? God is moving, God is working in the lives of people who are outside of the community of faith. The co-worker that has questions about life and its meaning. The friend struggling from grief of the unexpected death of a loved one. The family member doing their best to reconcile a real desire to be a person of faith with other values like tolerance or respect for science. What will your response be when the Magi come? Will you be able to point them to the Messiah? Even if, and maybe especially if, they come as an outsider, even if, maybe especially if, it's someone who was once hostile to the community of faith. God is still using anything and everything God can use to draw those who are outside into the knowledge of his love for them. God is using stars and signs and moments and experiences. God is still guiding. What will you do when one of the Magi comes searching for the child who was born King of the Jews. Thanks be to God. Amen.
turn now to a time of giving back to God a portion of that with which God has blessed us. I want to remind everyone that we have online giving available through PayPal, and we are still receiving checks in to the church office. And I do want to thank you for your continued generous support of the ministries here at Bethel Church. We have been able to do so much good ministry together this year, and it's only because you all continue to be generous with you are giving towards your church. Let us pray. Almighty and all loving God, as the Magi brought gifts to honor the newborn King Jesus, we too bring gifts. We give back to you some of that with, with which you have blessed us, praying that your spirit might send it forth into the community to reveal more and more of your kingdom in our midst. We give ourselves in service and in mission as we seek to help others be guided into your love, be guided into your kingdom. Use us this day and this week that we might continue to be faithful followers of the newborn king, in whose name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, As we turn now to praying for the needs of this church and for the world, I invite you, if you have a specific prayer request, to type it into the YouTube chat so that we all might be holding one another through prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty and all loving God, we come to you at the start of this year. needing more and more of you in our lives and in our world. We pray that you might, that this year we as a community, as a nation, as a world might be healed from this pandemic, might be healed from this virus. 
We pray for medical workers who continue to risk their health and safety in the name of healing others. We pray for teachers and students who will return to hybrid school, virtual school, return to not normal. We pray for their safety and for patience. God, we pray for our community, which still stands divided. Help us come together to accomplish important things to meet the challenges that we face. We lift to you the needs of this church, those that are a part of our church prayer list, those that have been typed into the YouTube chat, those that we name before you in our homes, and those we keep in the quiet of our hearts. God, we know that you are here and you are on the move. Give us eyes of faith to see, to see you moving and working so that we can put our hope and our trust in you. God, as we begin a new year, help us to follow you more closely. Help us to grow in our knowledge and love of you. And help us to grow in our love for each other. For those in our church family, and for our neighbors and other members of our community. For we do seek to follow, and we do seek to love. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, born to be our Savior and Lord, as we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now would you join us for our final hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excel. i 
to receive these words of benedict of blessing may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace amen and hail to the football team <laughs>